Hey, what's up, fellow uh, YouTubers? So today I want to show you how to read and parse a CSV file. If you don't know what a CSV file is, basically a uh, delimited file. And normally they're delimited by commas. I can show you an example on my Windows uh, directory. I put one here in CTEMP. And if you look at it, you can actually look at it in just plain Notepad++ or something. So in this case, I have a comma delimited file. And the first line is kind of a throwaway line. It's just the header to kind of give me uh, the information that's there. And then the, the rest is that real data. Sometimes you may have a CSV file that has headers and sometimes there may not be any headers and you have to just deal with it accordingly. If you do have headers on, headers on your CSV file, then you may want to just read a line, get rid of it, and, and uh, that, that's it. In this case, as you can see, we have a student ID, we have a last name, a first name, the age, uh, a phone number, and a GPA. And the reason I have all these different types is because you will have to be able to read different types. For example, this is a double or a float. Uh, all, of, uh, all of these are basically strings. And then the phone number the, is also a string, but the age is an integer. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, let's go to Visual Studio and just create a simple application. <clears throat> One of the first things that we need in order to read any file is we need to include F string. So once we have that, we need F stream, and that's what we're gonna use to read our file. Uh, there's another uh, thing that we're gonna need to separate uh, our, our uh, to parse the actual string that we read in, and that's going to be SS stream. Oops, I have to say include. Include, basically string stream, okay? because we need to basically read the line from the file, store it into a string, and I'll show you how to do that, and then bring it in. The other one that you normally do need is string, if you wanna work with strings, and also notice that I like to include my STB namespace, so let's go ahead and, and start writing some code. So in order to read a file, the first thing you wanna do is you want to get a file and input stream. Notice this is an input stream. I am reading a file, so it's an IF stream. And so I have my input file, and then I have the file. I'm going to open it. And we know it's located at temp, and the name of the file is student records and it has an extension of csv and then we are going to begin reading it let's get rid of this hello world As a matter of fact let me leave the hello world let's make sure our application actually runs let's see let's see it run i always like to start with an application make sure it runs okay it does run so let's leave it at that and then let's get rid of it so now we know it runs and when we read a file, the first thing we want to do is we want to get line. Now, there's other ways to read the data from the file. There's there's ways that you can say, you know, read in an integer, read in a double. But I'm going to show you why. The when you read a CSV, you want to read in line. So, get line is part of the F stream. I believe it's part of the F stream um, um, library. So you pass it the input file. And you need to pass it a line, which we have to declare a line here. And it'll just be a string line. We initialize it to that. Every time we get done with the line, let's go ahead and just clear it out so we know we don't have anything in the line. And once we get the line, then we take the line and we have to parse it out. So we're going to parse it out into different variables. And based on the data, uh, the data that we have is the student ID, which is the first thing in the file. And then we have a last name. And we have a first name. Then we have the age. 
Uh, then we have the phone. Then we have the GPA. And I think that's it. There's another thing though that um, you'll see that we're gonna need this uh, temp string. And it's, nobody likes those names, but it's just like, um, you know, it's, it's basically a string for um, getting data that's like the double and the age because we still have to get it at the uh, double or an age. And then the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna say string stream, um, which is part of that S stream class, S stream uh, library. So we're gonna say string stream and we're gonna say uh, input string. And we're going to pass it the line. So what that's doing is that's allowing us to create a stream out of the line. Why do we want a stream? Because I'm going to show you so it can make it easier for us to read everything in. So next, next thing you know, we're just going to have a whole bunch of get lines. Um, and I'll go ahead and, and do a little cheat here. Take from my clipboard here and just copy everything that we're going to copy in. Notice that all I'm doing is getting the line from the input string and reading it into the student string and then the last name, first name, and so on. But notice that on this one, I am getting the age. And the way I do it first, I get it as a line. And then I take and converted using the A to I conversion. And um, I'm not sure if I need to have the A to I included. You may need it. I think it may be in the standards, uh, C standard library, or it may just come uh, natural. But uh, actually, it, let's, let's see if this works. If it doesn't work, we, we can go find out what library A to I is included in. So then we get the phone number. And then again, getting the GPA because the GPA is a floating point number and we're just going to store it as a double. We read it into the same string and then we clear it. And probably a good practice would be to clear the string before we use it. So 10 string, clear it there and, and then do it. And here just probably initialize it to that. So we don't need to clear it the first time. And that that's basically it as far as getting the the input and then of course we can take and do something with it put it somewhere else or just output it to the screen or whatever the case may be one of the things that we can do with this information is take all of that and for example um, put it into records so let's say that we wanted to put it into a vector of records. And let's say that we had a class, like a student record. Let's say we had a, a, a class or a struct of student records. Let's, let's just create that really quickly. Let's drop it in here. And I have created a student record class. Uh, not sure why it doesn't like that. Um, not liking my using, oh, there it is. It's just catching up. So I created a struct of student record and with a constructor to initialize ID, first name, last name, age, phone number, and just copy those values. And those are actually um, attributes of that struct. And then of course, it's just going to display that data. So when I have the uh, vector, I can create a vector and a vector is nothing more than a container or collection and I can say student, since I have student records uh, and I just call it students, then what I can do is I can take and every time I add one of these records, I can just read it into my vector of students. Uh, and I can say um, students push back. And of course I'd have to push back a student, but I haven't constructed the student. So to construct a student, 
I just have to create a, a student with the information that I read from the file. I can create the student right here. I create a student and I push it to the vector and I pass the parameters from all the information that I read there. Then I could take and just display just to show that I have everything that is included there. I can display each student so I can loop through the students and just sell them to display and you can see that I have all the students. So let's go ahead and run this and see what this looks like. Oh yeah, remember that I said that we have an extra line and for the headers. And you may want to do something with that, but in my case, I don't want to do anything with it. So I'm going to throw away that line. So I'm just going to say uh, input file line, and then I'm just going to clear the line. That way I don't read that, that header line. So there's the code. And I'm going to post this code uh, up there, but let's see what it does before I get into all that. Um, looks like did it, it didn't output my um, data. Let's see why it didn't. It pushed it back. It has a student's records. Maybe I need to save and build. I know sometimes it doesn't save, and so it's not like uh, with C Sharp that every time you save it, it just automatically saves. Oh, it's not coming up. We have the students, we're displaying the students. So why isn't it taking the students? We're adding the students, pushing the students back, clearing the line. Oh, I think, let's see if we have that file name correct. Student records. See, oh, there it is. It's a slash, it wasn't reading the file. We could have walked it too and seen that it wasn't reading the file. I was missing a slash there on the students. So let's go ahead and run it again. And you can see that I have that. So that's it's that easy, just that easy to read a CSV file. Uh, if you like this video, uh, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this and want to keep coming back, and I don't just do C++, I do other languages too. So if you want to keep coming back for some, you know, co great content, I hope you think it's great content, then come back and, and go ahead and subscribe and, and get the notifications and all that. And uh, if you want the code, I'm going to post it in the description below. So thanks for watching.